Hello everyone, what's up? It's me, it's the last Uchiha here. Uh, it's a new day, it's a new life, and uh, as always, you know what I mean? Follow me if you want to follow yourselves. I hope that we get there together, oh, baby boy. Um, so, I actually want to make a really quick video today, no edit, no intro, really, and I just want to talk about uh, the sneaker game, uh, kind of in the general sense and the specific sense, I'm going to call it today uh, Sneaker Con, and actually for those of us that aren't you know, sneaker heads are involved in the the uh, basketball shoe and general sneaker culture. Uh, there's a big event going on called Sneaker Con today. Uh, they have them in different cities throughout the year. Uh, Kiaz Omar and some of the uh, Dream Crew or Queen Crew, however they call it, uh, you know, put on this event and it's really cool and a lot of YouTubers and other uh, celebrity basketball players, basketball impersonators or trainers and other people participate so it's really cool uh be nice if they invite me one year because you know i'd probably be the oldest rookie at 35 maybe not but that's just a joke i'm going to make and uh, also i come from a different perspective and era um and i'm kind of riding a different wave and kind of have my own thing as opposed to everyone else that's you know swimming with the herd and following the group culture on this one um so what i want to talk about today is sneakers in general so um First of all, in a generalized sense, I just want to uh, remind people out here when buying shoes and stuff like that, that I don't want to judge anyone's choices or anything, but that these corporations really don't give a fuck about us. They don't care about us. They don't care about our communities. Uh, the technology in these shoes sometimes is subpar and you see lots of athletes experiencing injuries or having problems. And um, even the athletes themselves, if they weren't on contracts making millions of dollars with these companies, they likely wouldn't choose to wear some of those shoes for a performance setting because some of those shoes are just poor performers. What I'm referencing here is there's um, a sort of combination of clout and uh, consumption uh, you know, that's going on where people want to buy really expensive shoes. Like they want to spend $500, $300, $1,000 on a pair of shoes because it's some you know, unique color scheme or because it's a rare item and all this sort of stuff. But um, in all actuality, I don't think some of those shoes actually serve that person's purpose of performance or, um, you know, playing a good basketball game all that well. And I'm kind of concerned because I think it reflects the larger issue. A lot of us today don't really know ourselves. So when we have to make decisions like this, we don't really know how to make very good decisions. And what I'm trying to say here isn't that, you know, people are dumb or anything like that, but culture makes us naive and also de-skills us a lot of the time. You know, the mainstream consumerist culture there attached to large corporations. They don't want you to measure your feet on a piece of paper so you know the actual width and length of your feet, something that people don't very much do anymore. That way you buy multiple pairs of shoes that don't quite fit properly or you have to constantly relace when you're on the court performing or that the traction is subpar or the cushion setup isn't good for your body type and what your body needs when playing. So um, I want people to make better decisions and I think it's reflective of us not having enough information, whether it's the companies not giving us enough information, whether it's sometimes us ourselves with our personal responsibility having to know ourselves very good, what we need in terms of our body, what we need for performance, what kinds of attributes and sizes our bodies have, those sorts of things. But um, I'm not trying to condemn anyone, it's just that, you know, like, I think a lot of time, energy, and resources is wasted on the clout chasing and these really, you know, expensive fetishized shoes that won't make you a better person, they won't make you hit 10 foul shots in a row, they don't improve your left-handed layups or right-handed layups, uh, you know what I mean? So they're not going to do that for you, right? So there's no point in spending $1,000 on a pair of shoes. Now, what I want to do is I also want to show you what I currently have in my bag, what I use when I'm going to train outside and indoor, and I want to explain why, and maybe that will help you understand how to make really good choices for yourself when it comes to footwear and stuff like that. So, um, you know, my house, as always, is a little bit of a mess here. I keep my shoes down here in a little case like this, and uh, so I'm going to pull out the indoor ones first. I live in, you know, uh, Canada, which is very cold and we have a lot of winter and so I have currently have three pairs of indoor shoes now all of these shoes are not this year's models like it is 2018 right now it is April 1st 
You know what I mean? A lot of these shoes came out in 2016. I think maybe even one or two in 2015. As a result of that, I pay significantly less than what they had retailed for previously. So like shoes that were $180, I got them for $60 Canadian or $80 Canadian or in some cases $39 American plus shipping, those sorts of things. So, and why I got each particular shoe is because I researched them heavily according to what my body needed for performance and also <clears throat> what I would prefer to wear based on uh, some of my body's attributes. Like I have a very wide foot. Uh, you know, it's extremely wide. I'm a size 13 in terms of length, but more so like a size 14 in terms of width of my foot. So uh, the first pair that I have here in the bag is the brand black Future Legends, actually. And so the Future Legends came out, I believe, in 2015 or 2016. And, you know, uh, they're a really good performer indoors. Um, traction's super cool. It's got like a teeth arrow sort of pattern. What I mean by teeth is that it's raised up and um, they really grip and bite the floor well. It's got a full length traction or cushion setup on it, sorry. Jetlon Plus EVA, which is a composite foam mixed with a lot of rubber. Up here they have a jacquard upper. This little detachable ankle sort of uh, strap that actually fits on like this. And it's a pretty dope shoe. I gotta say it's pretty amazing when uh, running around. I got no problems with it. The only issue I have is I have Achilles tendonitis and uh, my left Achilles starts to ache after a while we're playing. So that's my number one indoor on-court performer. Here we have my number two. <coughs> I like to bend the little edges of my shoe here to better, better fit my left Achilles. Um, so this is the second shoe. This is the Jamal Crawford 3. The J Crossover 3 shoe, his third signature shoe. Uh, I don't think that people always need to get signature shoes or anything, but this had a form of technology that I was really eager to get. It has uh, really great traction. Brand Black's uh, blade, wiper blade form of traction setup. It's got full length cushion that's encased in this vector, force vector hard frame here. So the cushion's fully encased. It's got really good impact protection, nice little bounce to it. Um, yeah, I like the setup a lot. It also has these supportive wings or straps that fit on the back and lace up through the top three, three lace loops, so it's pretty cool in that respect if you need a little extra support. And overall, I really like the colorway. It's a solid one color colorway, so it looks super dope when you're playing. No complaints there. Again, the only issues that I have sometimes is my Achilles issues, and it's nothing to do with the shoes. These are All the brand black shoes have really nice Achilles pillows in them, so that my Achilles is, you know, protected on either side. As you can tell, it's got a hard TPU in there. So, um, and the third one... So we have, these ones I don't play in as often, only because um, they're more ex they were more expensive to buy. I think they were like 75 American plus shipping. <coughs> and these are the Force Vectors, the brand black Force Vectors. And uh, oh, I got some shit on them here. But yeah, so full length Jetlon Plus cushion. And uh, again, the traction blade, the wiper blade traction pattern. This shoe was originally Josh Smith's um, signature model in 2015. Uh, it's all leather. I'm not really a huge fan of leather uh, shoes at all, and I tried to avoid them. But, you know, I wanted to cop these, so that's all I could get. Again, nice padding all around. Nice insole. So these are my third pair of indoor shoes. So now we're going to switch it up. We're going to go over to my outdoor shoes <clears throat> and I currently have two pairs of outdoor shoes this these ones here which are the brand black ethers they have the same tooling as the JC threes the exact same uh, outsole and cushion setup uh, again same sort of thing and uh, hard TPU on the back 
And yeah, so it's a lovely shoe. Slightly different upper with more support here in the upper and on the sides here. So there's less flex over. One of the issues with the JC2, which looked similar to the Force Vector, was the fact that it would slide over here. But that doesn't happen on the Force Vector, and that doesn't happen in these shoes either. And I don't really notice it happening in the JC3 at all. So the Ethers are my second pair of outdoor shoes. And for my last pair of outdoor basketball shoes, we got these ones. It's the D-Rose 7735. So this is his budget model, the D-Rose budget model of shoes that incorporate many of the same technologies as the signature models, like the D-Rose 7 has this whole leather ankle brace sort of setup going on. And actually you can see here where I cut, it used to go over these two lace loops as well. I cut it off because it was actually hurting my feet. Um, has a really wide outrigger for stability here. Nice wide base to it. Excellent herringbone traction throughout the shoe. No problems there. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good shoe. No complaints. It's a little dirty. I walk around in these and shoot on the court around the corner from my house. But uh, yeah, it's my second pair of outdoor shoes. So that's what I got in the bag for my setup. And all of these shoes, all of these shoes were less than $100 Canadian. Like not combined, but I mean each individually. Each individual shoe here cost me less than a hundred bucks. Like the brand black ethers I got from Courtside Sneakers and they were $80 Canadian with free shipping. The JC3s I got from eBay and they were $60 American with I think like $20 shipping, something like that. Uh, these were 75, the, the brand black Force Vector Premiums, they were $75 American with like 15 or 20 dollars shipping again and then these ones were the most recent the brand black future legends and these were 39 dollars american on nordstrom rack and uh shipping was another like 15 or something like that but like look at that man i got five shoes you know what i mean one two three four five pairs of good quality performance shoes that have all of the performance features of any of the signature models, the most expensive models that have traction that rival the best sh shoes that you're paying $300 for or $200 for. And I paid a fraction of the price for that. A fraction of the price. And all of these shoes fit my feet and help me perform on the court better than any of those super expensive clout chasing shoes would than those thousand dollar shoes or the five hundred dollar shoes or whatever it is now i'm not trying to knock people's choices but what i'm trying to say here is i think if you really get to know yourself you start to do things like measure your shoe you start to look at different forms of technology that are in shoes and get to understand what your body might need as you age or as your game develops and so like over time, I didn't know these things. When I, was, when I first started playing ball and stuff like that, I was just chasing one brand because the image and the culture, quote unquote, attached to that brand was one that I found appealing and that I wanted to be a part of. You know, uh, many of us remember the and one basketball shoes. Uh, you know, I used to get exclusively and one basketball shoes and I had a lot of pain or days where I couldn't go play the next day and I didn't understand why. And it was literally because I was buying shoes and I'm not trying to knock and one or anything like that. Could be any company, could be the most prestigious, let's say a Nike, an Under Armour, an Adidas, all of these large companies, a brand black, any of them. Sometimes they just churn shoes out that have lower quality technology and that literally aren't very good for performance purposes or for people that has specialized needs in terms of their bodily attributes. What I mean there again is I have extremely wide feet. Extremely wide feet. It's just I'm a, I'm a wider dude, even though I'm like skinnier now and stuff like that. And I'm wearing several layers of clothing so I can go shoot around outside in the cold. It's just like my feet have always been very wide. There's nothing I can do about that. And I didn't realize that was a huge issue literally until this year. I just had thought, oh, well, you know, it's just feet. I can just buy sizes of shoes and I'll just try on different things. And if they fit, they fit. But there's no, like you ha actually have to research shoes, which are specifically better or worse for people with wide feet, shoes that are too narrow. Like I just, there's certain Nikes and stuff like that, which are cut very, very narrow. No matter what size I would get in them, I could wear a size 16, still probably too narrow for my foot, even though I'm only a 13 in length, you know? So 
those sorts of issues arise. I just want people to make better choices and become more aware of what's out there. Pandora, please stop. It's just a shoebox. The cat loves to enter shoeboxes. She absolutely adores it. She will scratch all day at a box just to get inside of it. Um, going back to what I was saying, please do your research. You know what I mean? Go on the internet. There's tons of deals available. Get some of the last year's models or some of the models from a couple of years ago. Save yourself the trouble of buying really expensive, poorly fitting shoes that have shitty technology on them that you don't like anyways. Just do a lot of research before you make a purchase. Really be comfortable with your purchases before you go and make a purchase. And to all those people who are like, well, I just want the clout shoes, I just want something that's really expensive and, and very prestigious and all that, fine. But I just want to ask you something. Do those shoes really help you with the the performance of basketball or with the purpose of you getting better at the craft of basketball? If the answer is no, then please consider there are better alternatives for you out there. Okay? Um, again, it's SneakerCon today. I think they need to have people like me who represent you know, low budget balling. We, we, you know, we're budget ballers, man. We can't buy, I can't buy $500 pairs of shoes. I have three cats. One went to the vet yesterday. My bills are due next month. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to catch up on the bills from this month and like I got to eat. So I'm not going to buy $500 pairs of shoes. I think that's absolutely ludicrous. People that buy a thousand dollar pairs of shoes, I don't get it. Um, to each their own, uh, but to a certain extent, that culture is kind of toxic and it's not very empowering or helpful, especially for those of us that can't afford those things, and especially for those of us that end up buying those things and end up being uh, hurt or, um, you know, adversely affected by some of those commodities. And again, I want to bring home the point that a lot of these companies, uh, these corporations, don't give a fuck about us as consumers. They don't give a fuck about basketball culture. They don't give a fuck about basketball players. They don't even give a fuck about their workers or where they produce the shoes because the minute it becomes cheaper to pay workers less somewhere else or cheaper to produce the shoes, they move their factories there all over the world. From Thailand to another location, to Korea, to another location, to another location, and they just keep doing that for a number of years. Um, so these companies have absolutely no love for us. These corporations that spend a billion dollars on marketing, you know, trying to sell us dreams of their products uh, and, and, and instill this ideology that these products will make us better players or people, uh, it's really bullshit. It's really, really bullshit. And I hope you can smell a fart when one happens to be in the room because that's the case here. Uh, and I think everyone, I'm going to sign off on that note. You know, you don't gotta spend a thousand dollars to get a good pair of shoes, and um, those you know thousand dollar pairs of shoes will not make you hit ten foul shots in a row. They won't make your behind the back dribble better. Uh, just won't happen. So um, everyone out there, work on your games. Really get to know yourselves. Sneaker con. And the crew that runs it, please invite me. You need some budget ballers like me. I know I'm a little older or whatever, but like I can hoop, man. Check the profile, check the statistics. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got a little bag to me. I can do this basketball thing fairly well. And uh, I'm not really a competitive guy. What I'd like to do is train with everyone. Sure, I'll run in a game. I just don't, you know, make a bunch of videos uh, embarrassing my community members or throwing the ball off their head anymore or stuff. I don't. Uh, I grew out of that phase. I don't think it's the coolest thing to do with basketball. I think building people up is much cooler. So, um, like to do that at SneakerCon. Y'all should invite me. I'm a cool guy. I'm the last Uchiha. This is the end of this day and this life. I'm going to go shoot around. Follow me if you want to follow yourselves. Hopefully we get there together. Talk to y'all soon.